anyway, good morning. I want to welcome everybody here. Um, I'm Marvin Wheeler and chairman of the Open Data Center Alliance. And uh, we're pretty excited to have this format today as part of the Cloud Expo and uh, spend the day with a series of speakers that you're about to hear and, um, and panels that, you know, on some hot topics and so on and so forth. And um, we think it's going to be a, you know, a great day. We're very appreciative of Cloud Expo to partner with us to, to have us um, do this in conjunction with their uh, existing uh, event. And uh, I, as I was talking to everybody, they were, they were saying, well, just explain, because I'm always walking around very excited about this, I'm always in a very upbeat mood about it. I said, well, just sort of explain to everybody why you're so excited. And I, this happens a lot with the media guys, you know, do interviews and they, they say, well, why are you always so excited about this? And I started thinking last night, and um, I had the good fortune after a long career at um, Bell South, I, I did a startup in Miami, Florida called Terramark. And um, we were able to do some really neat things over a 10 or 11 year period and had a, um, we were acquired by Verizon. It was a great exit. It was, and everybody there is still very excited about the go forward. And, and I think about, you know, things that I was able to do in a startup that became a $2 billion uh, acquisition. And it was all about our product, our people, and a purpose. And we were able to do things, but bring in the best in class people, have great data centers, great um, cloud products. And there was always this sense of purpose amongst everybody from the early years when we had nothing and we were, the day we opened the doors and we were burning $4 million, $4 million a month to at the very end being profitable and, 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 and valuable to, uh, to a large company like Verizon. And I think back at the parallels of how we got this Open Data Center Alliance started. And I think back a year and a half ago in hotel conference rooms here in New York, and it was just a small group of people that came from some of the best companies out there, some of the best minds, and sort of decided that this was something that everybody wanted to do. And I've seen now over the last year and a half, as we've grown from a small group to over 400 members, we've gone from, you know, to now where the buying power of the overall membership is over $100, 100 billion a year in annual spend. We've um, done many of the same things we were able to do at Terramark as a startup where, you know, we have now collaborations with the best in class uh, organizations out in the industry to, to help us get where we want to be. And, and, uh, and, and it's just, and the people themselves that are involved, the wait till you see everybody speaking on the panels and speaking here today, I think you'll be very, very impressed with, you know, how the quality of, of the folks that have been involved in it. And then very specifically, the thing that makes me excited and why I always get, get energized every time we're in meetings and, and so on is this sense of purpose that, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that we'll have meetings and you have you have C-level people from competing companies in the industry in a room with a sense of purpose about what we're trying to accomplish uh, with the ODCA. And, and it's just, you walk out and you would never know, you would never ever know that on the outside world, some of these companies are very competitive with each other. It's a very collaborative environment. We, and, we've, and I think it's that sense of purpose that has now brought in all of the big solution providers that people doubted would, would participate in a user-driven organization that out sending requirements back to the OEM community, I think that they can see this sense of purpose within the organization and that's why they've come in. Other, other organizations out there, you know, the, I don't want, if I start saying them, then I will, I'll leave one off and everybody will be mad, but it, you know, things like Cloud Security Alliance and, and the ECLC and, and it, it, these organizations have come in and embraced and you'll see different things we've done with them in a collaborative way. So with that said, Today was supposed to be, I, f I feel like uh, we were a public company. That's the other thing. When we started out, four, burning $4 million a month, then we were a public company. So you had to go report this every quarter. It was kind of a tough thing for years and years. And I remember our CEO, Manny Medina, when we finally hit the kind of cash positive side after about eight years, had that certain little, like, you know, little hitch in the step, could be able to go into that earning call and announce to the world that no longer are we burning cash. We're, we're doing it. And I feel like this event is sort of very similar. We've, we've come along, we have, this is one of the first times we can get many, many of the uh, 300 or so plus members to come in and work together and meet each other, be able to kind of put a face to the, you know, to the name on, the, on all the conference calls we're having, and have lots of people out here that are 
prospective members to be able to see what's going on. We're hoping that anybody that's an existing member or a prospective member takes the opportunity over the next, you know, the, all during the day and then this evening in the networking event to meet each other, meet and talk. And I think that at the end of the day, I would love to hear from people at the networking event, but I think you're going to feel the same way, that there is this great people, great product when you see all the different use cases and some of the POCs you're going to see, and then most importantly, this sense of purpose. So I'm, I'm, I'm very, very happy that everyone's here, very happy for all you that got up this early to, to be here and be the first ones in, and I, we really hope the, the uh, the day turns out to be as uh, rewarding to you as we think it will be. So with that said, I'm gonna introduce uh, our first uh, keynote speaker. I'm gonna put my glasses on, because here's the deal. So Kurt works at, at, um, Lockheed and, at Lockheed Martin, and the thing about Lockheed Martin is their titles are absolutely world longest titles that you can ever imagine. So I have to actually be able to read it, because uh, at my age I can't remember past about midway through. So. Is VP and CTO of Cybersecurity and Next Gen Innovations for Lockheed Martin for Information System and Global Services. He's, um, you know, that, it, and I think I cut off some of it, believe me. Anyway, he, um, he leads Lo uh, Lockheed Martin's uh, Next Gen Cyber uh, Innovation Center for R&D and Innovation. He's been the recipient of many awards within Lockheed Martin, including three times uh, the President's Award sits on the tech, technology advisory boards of companies like Intel, HP, Microsoft, McAfee, and he's published a couple books already, in, and two of which now are in their, their second printing. Past reading the, the thing, what I will tell you is Kurt's been just a tremendous, uh, you know, energy driver into our, into our sessions, been a, a visionary leader, and um, we're just real excited that he, you know, again, somebody working for somebody like Lockheed Martin that takes the time to come and work on, a, on, a, um, on an organization like this and, and generate what I'm continuing to say, this sense of purpose within our organization. So I think we're going to play a quick little video and then Kurt will come up. Well, thanks, Mar Whoa. well, thanks, Marvin, for those kind words. Welcome, and uh, good morning to everyone. Glad you could come this morning. Whenever we have a keynote this early in the morning in New York, I always have a vision that there's one person sitting in the back left-hand corner. So to put a little context, uh, it was nice enough to be asked to be the, uh, the president of the Alliance. And I actually, it was, a, it was from a text message. You know, you got to be careful what you answer. So I was in Boston. Uh, some colleagues of mine, Intel, sent me a text message and said, hey, Kurt, you wouldn't happen to be available in a couple days for a meeting in San Francisco. And I said, well, I'll be in Silicon Valley anyway. So on the flight, I land, and they, I get the next text message. Oh, by the way, you're the president of the alliance. Could you speak in an hour? So it was an interesting start, but it's been a lot of fun since we've uh, gotten going. So what I thought we'd cover a little bit today is what we see as the trends in the market. What's going on? What's the driver? Why do we have an open uh, data center alliance? What's the mission of the Alliance? What we've accomplished? Show how at Lockheed Martin, how we leverage some of the capabilities of the usage models and how we're leveraging that. And then talk about some of the new stuff we have coming down the pike. You can't pick up anything today without seeing all the most common trends, right? So it's not that things are growing. Things are growing exponentially. And that's causing all kinds of challenges. So two times the growth of information every two years, and when you start getting into petabytes and exabytes and blah, 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 bytes, it's an amazing amount of information to manage. 15 billion connected devices. I'm not sure why we have to put an IP address on my toaster in my fridge and my car, but it's there now, or coming soon to a place near you. And this mobile data traffic, it's amazing how much traffic we're generating and information we're, we're looking to manage. But this is really creating four bigger picture trends. Some call it tectonic, trip, uh, tectonic challenges, um, shifts in industry. But affordability is number one. If you're going to scale, you can't do things the same way you used to and do it in an affordable fashion. And the last time I checked, is everybody's budgets going up? <laughs> Generally not. 
but you have to manage all this new scale that's coming down to ensure your business has the applications and the customer experience it needs to go forward. Approved agility. You know, we have just new sets of generations of folks coming on board. I know that when my four-year-old taps on the iPad, if the application doesn't immediately come up line, she looks at me and goes, Dad, it's broken. I'm like, sorry, honey, you had to wait about two seconds for that. You know, the Wi-Fi is running a little slow today. Greater efficiencies. Obviously, as you grow, we haven't always been efficient because when you had plenty of budget, there was no challenge. You need more capacity, just adds more servers. Well, that created a lot of challenges over time. And then foundationally, improve security. And this is a lot more than compliance. That's building that trust inside your organization and outside your organization that what you're doing and delivering can be done in a secure fashion that you're trusted. So how does this affect us? So if you're anywhere in the world, I can pick up your favorite mobile device, and one of my kids happens to play soccer. It took us about 15 minutes to get online with a bunch of different providers. We created a team calendar, a team website, a team Twitter account, a team texting, because no one would want to actually get to a soccer game in case it was raining. You, know, you didn't actually want to show up. You needed that real-time information. It's really easy to do everything. When I'm on travel, I click my little Skype button, I talk to my kids. Then you go to work. It's a little slower, it's a little more expensive, and suddenly, it's a different experience. But when we look at the trends that are happening, you know, bring your own device, affordability, a social everything world. Everybody has situation awareness. I'm not sure why we have to know that, you know, Barry just got some pizza in London at a pub, but you know, I know it now, right, in real time on any device I have. Uh, the expectations are completely changing. Those experiences they have, people have at home or in their own social devices, they're bringing to work and looking for that. And of course, there's an app for that. You know, just two weeks ago, we were looking up at the stars at my house, and one of my daughters goes, hey, is that Saturn? And I'm like, let me see. I popped open a little app. I looked up, and I said, no, that one's Mars. That one's Saturn. I would not have memorized that. I needed the app. So where we see things going is what we call a converged life. You're happy. Suddenly, you can get to use everything in a secure fashion. But if you look across the bottom of that picture, now that you're always on and you have that personal situation awareness, you need cloud computing or some capability to help drive all of the different things that you want. And now we're going to create new challenges, power management, big data, right? We have a big data expo, right, uh, at the same time as a cloud expo. Um, you're not just a consumer of technology. You're creating uh, new capabilities. Uh, the amount of information going up to YouTube every day is just staggering. I, I would hit some quotes out there, but I'd probably be wrong because they probably doubled their capacity in the last week. But there's a challenge underneath all of this, and this is cybersecurity. People want to trust everything they're with, but there's a challenge in privacy. And in the left-hand side of this chart, there are a lot of new threats happening in the world today that quite honestly, prior to the year 2000, you probably even never considered. Something as simple as a denial of service attack that could slow down your cloud applications, we thought we had that taken care of back in, say, the late 90s, early 2000s. Then a group like Anonymous comes back and able to leverage the power of this exponentially grown internet, and suddenly, denial of service is now a new challenge amongst data exfiltration and other things. We categorize at Lockheed Martin these threats into four little buckets. First, you need a physical security and secure supply chain. Got to start secure and stay secure. Then we take a look at what's going on in big picture, and we categorize everything into what we call the 80% known threats. And these are threats that classic tools. Uh, we have a cyber alliance with McAfee and Symantec, Juniper, Cisco, and others. Those kind of technologies do a great job at stopping what we call the known threats. Then there's these advanced threats, the 20% of very well-funded groups that are creating new types of malware every day, and they're leveraging cloud computing as an advantage point to build infrastructure to then uh, attack their targets. And then, of course, different groups have different mission capabilities that they need, and all of this are across a very expanding attack surface. So, of course, it's cloud computing to the rescue. About two years ago, I think we're at the, the peak of hype. Everything we did, if you're using cloud or you're talking about cloud, it saved the day. The good news is we are at that tipping point where people are starting to use it. We're starting to get a lot more lessons learned. 
because it's a lot harder to use cloud computing in a legacy environment than a brand new startup. And I'm, I'm, I'm ranking cloud computing third in the hype cycle right now. Big data is probably the most hope, overhyped word, most uh, least understood right now, which is probably a little more hype than mobility, because everything has to be mobile, and it's kind of edged down cloud computing. But there is still a lot of potential value that hasn't been gained in the cloud computing environments. On the left here, some of the things, depending on who we talk to, um, Lockheed Martin's an interesting position. Um, we're both a consumer of cloud capabilities with approximately 140,000 uh, members of our team around the world, but we're also a provider of cloud services as well. A lot of times people talk about lower cost. Can I get hardware to be more efficient, more elastic, lower administration cost, right? Our budgets aren't going up. Let's automate and enable our administrators to manage more with less. The one that I tend to focus on is the innovation accelerator. The days of actually calling someone to build a server feels like a very 20th century type activity. If I have a developer that wants to try 15 different things, they should be able to do so with a click of the mouse and build infrastructure and destroy infrastructure in rapid succession. And of course, this is probably a surprising one, but when you start to understand cloud computing, and you'll see a lot of our usage models from ODCA is focused on security, since that's a big barrier for cloud, it's actually a little easier to secure cloud assets than enterprise assets. Quick question, does everybody know all the assets on your network, all the people on your network, and all your apps? Anyone? Okay, there's a couple people in the back, you can't see them. It's hard, it's hard to manage enterprise IT at scale, but if I can bring everybody through one portal and we start tracking all those assets, the ability to know what all my assets are and defend them is much higher. Kind of feel like my kids in my iPad, it's just not clicking fast enough. So when we talk about a tipping point in industry right now, when I first talked to people about cloud, I don't know, five years ago, and we started doing a lot more cloud automation, this is what it looked like. I can automate a virtual machine. Woohoo! We've been doing that for what, five years now? Uh, that was just one little shell script or a Perl script talking to a back end system. Maybe you can develop some specific cloud applications using something like a Google Apps or Microsoft Azure out there. Um, your VDI or virtual desktop provisioning. That's great. But after you got this done in about three weeks, you start to run into a couple challenges along the way. I think I may need some uh, PowerPoint assist from the, our, our team in the back there. Thanks. When you start to try to roll out cloud at scale, you start running into challenges, lots of them. Cultural challenges. Virtualization, I remember when we started working in virtualization, it has to run in physical hardware because virtualization isn't fast enough. Now, when you start giving transparency to all the different groups, it's changing cultures. You need governance, automation. A lot of different changes. So when we look at all of these different changes out there in the world, that's one of the reasons we, I thought it was pretty exciting to start and support the Open Data Center Alliance. Because there's all kinds of great technology coming out in the cloud computing environment a lot. I'm looking forward to walking around the Cloud Expo myself and the Big Data Expo today to see maybe even something new that I haven't even seen before. How do we leverage that? Is there some kind of standards? What kind of usage models are our use cases are folks looking at? So the, the mission of the ODCA is to, to drive new levels of IT agility through the delivery of unified customer requirements for cloud computing. So you enable that secure federation of cloud service, automate the IT, get those common management and data policies for data center resources and transparency because as many leaders you'll find here, we're responsible for that service delivery. So that transparency and accountability becomes extremely important. If you're a vendor in the community, don't you like when you get to work with an end user who gives you feedback, good, bad, or ugly? And you have teams out there working with lots of users. One of the nice things about the ODCA, besides the person who put this graphic together and all these little itty titty bitty little uh, uh, icons, is now you're hearing from a lot of people. Now, with that said, every organization has lots of different stakeholders, and each stakeholder is going to want something special, and they all are special. But the reality is there are some commonalities. And that's where I think getting these groups together, you know, a, a big shout out thank you to the, uh, my colleagues and other executives that are on the board spending their time flying in from around the world. 
but more importantly, it's our working groups that have done some amazing jobs, because this is an additional duty to what they normally do to create these usage ca uh, use cases. And of course, uh, Intel being our advisor here and kind of helping us uh, get organized is being extremely helpful. So why should we work together? Well, first, help prioritize with 300 plus companies. And that's an amazing list of companies there. I mean, those are world leaders across the board in all their different segments. Unified voice to accelerate market delivery. We're not setting standards. We're setting use cases. These are the things we would like to be able to do with cloud computing. There's standards groups and there's different vendors that will then work together to create the technical capabilities we can leverage. Deliver solution testing and deployments based on a common foundation. And then, of course, sharing, which is, I think, a big theme today, is based on our uh, you know, Andy from, uh, is going to come next after me and, and go a lot more details into how they're leveraging cloud computing in some of their case studies. So we've really created a convergence of, of three different groups here. First, global enterprises, and that was the chart you saw with the 300 different vendors, our, our partners that we have in the ODCA today. Then we have cloud service providers. The great thing about tech, cloud technologies, it's popping up all kinds of new capabilities around the world. And then there's actually the technology um, solution providers. And when you combine all three of these, this is a very dynamic and emerging market. I kind of look at it as almost a renaissance of IT. I'd say five or six years ago, I thought IT was starting to get a little boring. Now that we're starting to move into more cloud computing, big data, mobility, it's a lot more fun, uh, I think, in the environment today. Here are some of the, um, the usage models. So far, we're up to 14 different usage models. I was actually working with some customers the other day, and they said, Kurt, we want to get into cloud computing. I'm like, fantastic. What do you want to do? Well, I'm not sure, but I know we want cloud computing. Where should we start? And I said, actually, a great place to start is go to our website over the o Open Data Center Alliance, and you can get a good big picture perspective from a lot of the leading companies around the world and what they see the common usage models are um, for using the cloud, and the capabilities to manage the cloud so you can take advantage of it. Secure Federation, you can tell where people's minds are right now. Security is a concern. Automation, that ties closely into having common management and policy so that you can scale. And then, of course, transparency, I think, is probably one of the aspects that as you get more transparency, it changes end user habits and it changes the habits of operational teams. Quick snapshot of the uh, standards groups on the right-hand side. Uh, Marvin mentioned uh, Cloud Security Alliance, uh, DMTF, uh, OASIS, a lot of the leading groups for setting standards. And then on the left-hand side are some of the uh, vendor partners we've had that have actually created checklists of how their solutions enable you to deliver against the usage models that we've published. You guys might want to give me a hint on where I'm supposed to point this. Uh, so for this point, let's just cover a little bit about Lockheed Martin and a little case study and a little miniature demonstration. Uh, first, Lockheed Martin, a fairly good-sized company. Uh, we do about $45 billion in uh, business around the world. We're a global security company. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be the number one IT provider for the federal government for the last 17 years. Uh, the division, our business area that I work with, is information systems and global solutions around 30,000 employees around the United States and around the world, and um, about 2,700 different customer programs. So what's interesting is I get to work with our internal teams as well as our customers, and the day doesn't go by that I don't hear something where there's a problem or a challenge, and I love to hear those because that allows us to go to the next level with our customers. So I happen to personally have uh, uh, three large global innovation centers around the world, one in Gaithersburg, Maryland, one in Farnborough, England, one in Canberra, Australia. And one of the challenges we're having is how do we get more automation, more agility, get out to market faster? So that was our, our big set of goals that we were looking to leverage cloud computing to do. The challenge really, and, and if you can tell I like to surf, and the challenge is picking that right wave so you don't get crushed on the rocks, is how do you do it in a safe and effective fashion so both from affordability as well as a secure perspective.
So our, our technical approach is what we call solution as a service. We weren't just looking at cloud because there's a lot, there's people involved, there's processes involved, there's technology involved, and the convergence of all three. So we refer to this as solution as a service, where we wanted to maximize the, our partners. Looks like I'm getting upgraded to 3.0, thank you. So we actually started with the, the usage models and took a look at that as a foundation to drive our solutions. Then, of course, we had specific technology requirements, and, and overall, the business goals are most important. Based on the different missions we had, you know, I can give you all kinds of fun stats of, you know, there's so many thousands of cores and petabytes of storage at every location that we're leveraging, but we needed to be able to scale out to different partner technologies to, to increase our capacity and leverage different cap, um, capabilities around the world. So we started off working with um, Terramart and uh, Amazon, as well as Lockheed uh, Community Clouds, to be able to burst and leverage these different capabilities. But at the same time, we wanted the ability to have that one single pane of glass from our cybersecurity across all these different areas. And what we found along the journey is, first we started with something simple. Hey, engineers, let's go to a nice catalog. You log in, it's simple. We have wizards on the back end. They takes care of everywhere, picks all the right clouds for you. But of course, our operations team, they wanted a different view so they could have situation awareness of all the clouds that they're monitoring and being responsible held for. And then, of course, we had power users. They wanted full control of all their assets. So at this time, I'll we'll give you a short demonstration for you. Um, I'll ask uh, Keena Liu and Keena Lee and uh, Barry Sheward, uh, two of my uh, senior en uh, engineers from Lockheed Martin and Lockheed Martin Fellows, to come up and kind of walk through a little demo for you. Well, um, thank you, Kurt. Um, name is Akinyele Akinyelu. I also go by JR, because Akinyele Akinyelu is a mouthful. And I've been working with Kurt now for uh, about 10 years, so he gets used to calling me JR as well. Um, if we could switch back to this. Uh, You're up on the big screen, oh, yeah. Well, You're good. I should be looking at that screen there. Uh, two things I want to stress out about, um, about um, enterprise management solutions here in terms of the cloud environment is service provided, provided as well as security. So we have all these clouds that are sitting out there, and the goal is to be able to have uh, awareness of your assets in that particular cloud. The screen we're looking at here is the customer experience screen. And what we're able to do is put um, sensors in different locations uh, using this um, Lockheed uh, solution to put sensors in different locations that monitor both the performance as well as the availability of your um, cloud assets and physical assets. So the screen I'm looking at here is a, a, a map that shows you where those sensors are and where your sites are. And if you scroll down on this particular page, you get to see um, details in terms of how you're meeting SLAs in that cloud environment. So from one particular sensor, you could see sites in Maryland, in Virginia, um, and pretty much all over the world. So moving from this particular screen here, uh, we have uh, different views. So we show an executive view. We also show an operations manager view. Now, I must preface the executive view by saying uh, there are different levels of executives. So um, the first thing is to want to know how you're meeting those SLAs, how your services are being provided. And then there is the deeper level of executives that want to dive a little deeper, actually find out how those particular assets are doing. So on this screen, we're looking at the organizational um, SLA. We're able to show the organization as a whole and all the assets to support that particular organization. That's on the top um, left-hand corner. And if you go to the bottom, you see the cloud assets. You see both private and public clouds as well. So we're able to tell you um, performance uh, from a particular sensor, from, from a particular data center to a particular cloud uh, provider, uh, sort of, sort of uh, such as Amazon or Termac. And we're also able to tell you how you're performing and your availability status within your private cloud. That's something that you have locally. Uh, in addition to that, um, we're able to um, pull up mission-centric information or business-centric information, so we're able to tie these assets to provide a particular service, a particular business service or, um, or a mission function. Of course, there are drill downs on all this. All this is clickable, um, and you could drill down to see what assets actually support that. Uh, just one last screen on here. On the um, level one now, so Kurt talked earlier on about what the executives want and what, what operations manager wants. Um, on this screen, we're able to show some summary level for the operations manager, telling you the number of assets you have in this particular location, uh, at this particular site, and how those assets are doing in terms of their health. 
So uh, on this, for example, we're able to see that um, in the Amazon cloud, we have uh, a little over what is that, three assets in the Amazon cloud, and we're able to show when those assets actually go down and when they come back up. Now, this is great for the data center and the operations manager sitting in a data center, but we also go as far as to be customer-centric. So Kurt talked about um, the three different buzzwords in terms of uh, big data, mobility, and uh, um, um, the last one was um, well, cloud. Um, so in terms of mobility, though, we're able to provide this interface also on uh, mobile devices, uh, iPads, um, iPhones, and things like that. So you get the exact same experience you're getting from this interface also on those devices, and you could manage your, your um, environment practically from anywhere. So with this, one of the nice things, this is one of the cultural challenges, which was the use case on trans, uh, usage model for transparency, is our operations teams didn't have visibility in the different clouds, so they didn't really want to move to them. So until they got that visibility, there wasn't a lot of, there was a lot of interference to try to move to there. So with that, if we now take a look at what we're actually showing to our end users, if you want to go ahead and pop over, we wanted our end users to just have a, a friendly internet-like experience to be able to get to their assets. So if Barry wants to go over into, say, cloud computing, and this is you know, basic 101, but we want to make it nice and friendly, you can go ahead, pick the type of system you want, fill out a basic screen, and it's just taken care of. And all the technology on the backside, what we call cloud suitability matrix technology, they don't have to worry about. Which cloud they're using around the world is based on their profile. So they don't have to actually worry about that. They can just go ahead and do their work. So it's requested. It's, I'm not sure which cloud it's going to go into. I don't care if it's just a cloud. Uh, but we found another set of users that were all about power users. There's, there's a shocking fact, a fun fact about Lockheed. I guess we have uh, more software engineers than uh, Microsoft in the, in the company. Um, for them, they didn't want us to automatically control what clouds they were using. They wanted the ability, like our groups out in Australia or our groups in the UK, pick clouds that are physically located near them. In this case, I think we're closer to Virginia. Um, go ahead and walk through the, uh, the wizard. Give them a little more control over what cloud assets they were going to go use. So what's interesting is we started working underneath the, the water under the different areas of the iceberg. We try to tie these back to the different use case models that the ODCA has um, published. So it's kind of a nice, you know, obviously not as easy as a service catalog that we target for our, our regular end users, but for our power users, they actually like to have this level of control. Because once they actually can then use the wizard, they can log back into their own environment and get full control over their assets that they have responsibility for. Want to go over mine? Now, what we expose to our end users depends on their specific job function, but it allows them to be able to if you pull up uh, action on the right-hand side, go through and do a variety of actions so they don't have to worry about what cloud provider, the financial agreements, the SLA agreements, all those kind of capabilities are already pre-integrated in. To include, if you wanted to take a look at, uh, Barry, how much money, you, just, your login is you, right? Yep. And how much are you charge, costing me this month? One of my chief developers has cost me a lot this month, but I know how to track it. <laughs> 241000 but from a security perspective, you can embed a lot of that security into the solution. So um, everything we've shown you so far is real information. Uh, security I can't show publicly, but I'm going to give you a snapshot. Um, go ahead and pop up our security screen. Now this is Kurt's view. Other, custom, other folks have different views of the world. This is my heat map. And the way you kind of read this is on the, go ahead on the top. On the left-hand side are different cloud assets we have around the world. Okay, obviously, the first thing we want to know is their SLAs, what's up and running. Latency has become a big um, key point for cloud management since with clouds all over the world, speed of light apparently only goes so fast until our engineers figure out how to speed it up. Um, the health of the system, but then we start moving across here to um, compliance, right? That 80% compliance is a compliant with our security policy against an 80% threat. Um, if we go next, we look over here at trusted platforms. 
Uh, we have some of our own technologies to ensure trusted platforms, but for uh, general use cases, we leverage Intel TXT technology today. Uh, we're working with some little companies like Trapezoid and others to enhance that into the future, so to make sure that the, even down at the BIOS and operating system and hypervisor layer, that's getting on the platforms that we want. Then we allow, uh, enable um, risk scores, real-time risk scores of all of our assets, either the overall risk, accepted risk, or risk for specific business objectives that we have. And then we look at more of the advanced um, security, if we see any security incidents or security campaigns against any of our cloud assets. It's a nice quick snapshot to see what's going on across your, your cloud environment. So uh, it was nice enough to have my cloud engineers come up for a moment here, if you give them a little round of applause. So if, if you missed it, that's what you saw. So if we look to the future, how can we make it not just easy, but a little easier to leverage cloud computing as we go forward? So one of the things, if you go to the website from the ODCA, you'll see three new tools there. One is a proposal engine assistance tool. And I like the word assistance because this doesn't mean we're setting any kind of RP standards. What we're doing is helping folks get a jump start on things they might want to consider when they're leveraging cloud computing as well as standardized response checklists to accelerate their time to market, and then start more and more sharing our own best practices, kind of like I did a quick snapshot of, of what we think is important. Now, you all are the experts in your environments. So you know what's best for you. But it's nice to be able to share that stuff out and see what other folks are doing. Um, I love going to these events because I end up learning an amazing amount. When we look at some of the new usage models that are coming out, service orchestration, commercial frameworks, um, compute IAS, some of the, the tougher challenges to tackle, long distance migration, identity management. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love the fact that I have 565 different logins. And then look at more of the harder areas of interoperability of applications and services as we go forward. You know, usually when you pick up an iPad or your favorite tablet and you click on an application, it's usually not going to one cloud you're getting that information from a lot of clouds. So that interdependency is going to be one of those challenges that we're going to over, need to overcome as a community as we go forward into the future. So great opportunity for today. Engage everybody, ask lots of questions, share lots of good information, help define a unified voice in the cloud, learn from your peers, insights, deployments, and proof of concepts. Start thinking about 2012 as that tipping point where we start leveraging cloud computing even to a greater extent. We got a great lineup today, so don't miss out on any of it. It'll be a lot of fun. I haven't seen anybody fall asleep yet in the morning. That's a good thing. And with that, that's the end of my presentation. I would thank, uh, like to thank everyone and uh, enjoy the day. <laughs>